Thanks for joining us for our presentation on Redesigning Her Story, a documentary film on women of graphic design in America. I'm Peter Bella. I'm an assistant professor in graphic design at the Department of Art and Design at the University of Central Arkansas. Hi, I'm Amanda Horton, or Mandy Horton, and I teach at the University of Central Oklahoma, where I primarily teach history of graphic design classes. So the reason this topic of women in graphic design became really important to me and I had a, uh, a big interest in it for me was over the years of teaching history of graphic design, which I have taught um, on and off for 11 years in my academic career, uh, I've had a lot of people in class, a lot of students in class come to me and ask me, well, why isn't there more information about women in graphic design? We you know, study a little bit about the Glasgow Girls. We study a little bit about um, a little bit about C. P. Pinellas. We learn about Paula Shear, and you know that's kind of where the text just kind of has most of the information. Other than that, it was fairly fairly thin. So, unfortunately, what I had to really tell students was, well, there's nothing on women in graphic design that's cumulatively put into into one place where we could find that information. So their best bet was to do as much research on their own as possible. And there was plenty of information about women in graphic design, but it was dispersed through so many different locations uh, and resources that they really had to go out and kind of gather that information. So this became a big interest to me. And the, the, the original objective, which is no longer um, the objective that we're on currently, was to just kind of create a collective resource where there was one place that talked about the women in graphic design over history. And uh, we are speaking about women in graphic design in America. But uh, what, what the original intent was to try to find a way to document that and put it into an interesting story to tell that story. Um, but from our research, which we'll talk about here shortly, we've discovered that that original intent, although as great of an idea that it that it is, there was so much more to the story and so much more that people really wanted to know. So that's what kind of you know, got my interest going, um, and it, the story really kind of took off from there. So along a similar lines to Pete, um, I had found that there was just not enough information and resources about women graphic designers in, in history textbooks. So um, I started a, a project on my own. Um, it's a podcast called Incomplete Design History, which is intended to feature stories um, from graphic design history that are not often covered in the textbooks. And the first season was intended to be on women in graphic design history. So um, so when I started talking to Pete about this project, it just really seemed that both of our goals were aligned. Um, so it just made sense to come on board and that I could use the research I was doing for the podcast to also um, dovetail in nicely to what we were going to do with the film. So having uh, Mandy join me on this journey for the documentary film has been uh, nothing but uh, amazing and welcoming at the same time. Um, when I first started the endeavor, I was really excited to, to get going on the project. I quickly found out, though, as I was trying to dig into uh, research and the discussion and look for uh, people that had information that knew other people that had information because a lot of the stuff that we found out we needed to talk uh, talk about and the people we needed to talk with um, it was a it was a pretty big endeavor in trying to make those connections and I realized that also from my perspective being mostly a studio professor uh, with my graphic design classes and then teaching history of graphic design you know as um, a third course that I quickly realized that the importance of a historian in telling the story was critical. Um, a colleague of mine said that I should reach out to speak with Mandy. And uh, when I when I looked into um, Mandy's teaching and her background and and realized um, how how ingrained she was into this subject, it it, it seemed like a no brainer. So. Uh, I was a little bit nervous, I, you know, I'll definitely tell you that. So when reaching out and eventually connecting with Mandy and Mandy's excitement about coming on to the project, um, again, was nothing but amazing and welcoming. And with Mandy's assistance as not only a design historian, but a 
female design historian and uh, being aware of some different folks like Ruki Newhold Ravakumar, and I hope I said that name correctly, um, you know, and getting us in touch with some of the people has been a, a very important aspect um, to our research. And it was those connections and those discussions that led us to realize that this film needed to be a lot more than just, um, you know, pardon the phrase, documenting the women in graphic design, but we needed to tell their story. We needed to tell her story for women graphic designers. So um, as Pete mentioned, the original plan was to really just document women in graphic design history from America. Um, we were going to shoot a, a short film, um, maybe about 12 to 15 minutes over the summer 2020, um, traveling to New York City and Baltimore and Washington, D.C. to meet with several contacts up there for filming. Um, but as many of you are aware, the coronavirus hit and the pandemic shut everything down um, and put a halt on this project. But luckily, we were able to pivot um, into recording a podcast as um, as part of Pete's podcast, um, Design Dedux. So with the coronavirus changing our course of plans, we realized that we couldn't make that documentary short and that documentary short was going to be a critical component to further our research and a, a big big part of our funding to do the documentary film uh, i don't know if anyone has, has has ever looked into the cost of documentary films and uh what the investments take and yeah there's documentary films that are done under very small budgets and shot on iphones even uh, the documentary film that we were looking to do and the endeavor that we were looking to do, we estimated, and that estimate, that estimate in the beginning was actually rather low. We estimated somewhere around forty to sixty thousand, but as we're looking into it now, it's going to be more around the sixty to eighty thousand or or beyond. So um, that documentary short was a critical component to moving forward with this uh, endeavor in the documentary film redesigning her story. So. What we did, as Mandy mentioned, was we had the podcast uh, platform. I have had Design Dedux, which is Creating Success in Design Education, a podcast that I've had um, going on its uh, almost into its second year now. And uh, we realized that, and we had a lineup of, of um, female designers, female educators, historians, students, uh, practitioners, all ready for us arriving with our film gear and doing those interviews, we reached out to each one of them and asked them, well, with what's going on, are, are you willing to pivot with us and shift into this virtual uh, online meeting style interview? And we're, we'd love to use that, that um, content that we get from that research and that discussion as material to kind of one, gather information that's going to be important to the film and important to our organization of, of content and topics and the discussion, but as well share that now as part of a, a way to start gaining some interest into, into that story. Uh, and that's actually been going really well. And we've had, um, I'm trying to do some quick math in my head. I think we've had approximately 14 different interviews. Uh, I don't know the exact number. It's, it's give or take. Um, but those interviews have gained uh, a lot of insight as to what um, redesigning her story, a documentary film on women in graphic design in America, really needs to have in it and not just become a collective place where we just talk about all the women in graphic design. Through our interviews with the, with the podcast Design Dedux, um, we interviewed people from the Smithsonian and the Cooper Hewitt specifically, and we interviewed um, you know, well-known graphic designers such as Jennifer Morla and Gail Anderson, and we interviewed design educators and design historians, um, Aggie Toppins and um, Louis Sandhouse and Brockett Horn and Briar Levitt. And we asked all of these individuals um, about their own work and their own research um, so that we could get an idea of what people were doing and what people were talking about in terms of women and their their contributions to graphic design history. We all know from our history books and, and throughout time 
that graphic design or graphic arts uh, was a very male dominant industry, starting back with cold typesetting um, and the amount of um, uh, manpower that it took to set uh, cold type. And uh, there were a lot of women, not many, but a lot of women still in that time that really didn't get discussed, but it was still a, a dominantly male industry. But what we've noticed over time is that that is greatly shifted. And even now, as we look to the classroom, we can see that the numbers of male to female students is quite skewed. And it's mostly a female student body in most um, universities that we have uh, been able to speak with different educators. And we think that's a trend uh, across the United States. So another interesting thing that I think is going to be part of this film when we you know, have those discussions and uh, begin putting things together from the cutting room floor, as they say, that we are going to find some interesting um, statistics on the amount of women that are graduating with graphic design degrees and going into graphic design careers versus entrepreneurs or small business owners that are women-run um, uh, graphic design agencies and firms. So that's been a, a, a really interesting part as well. And we don't want to talk too much about, um, you know, th some of these discussions that we've had because, you know, we would give up the film and then you wouldn't want to watch the film. So, um, you know, our, our findings are really, really interesting. And we have shifted definitely from that. Here are just women in graphic design and the great things they do. And we've also started to talk about this idea of notoriety and legends versus uh, the people that are out there every day doing it uh, as part of their their nine to five. As Pete mentioned, we've noticed this trend um, and, and many of the people that we talk to as part of our research for the podcast has in, have indicated that they've seen this trend as well, where women are starting to dominate men in the classroom. And certainly there seems to be a shift in higher ed where very you know, there are many, many female faculty members uh, at higher ed institutions, and they very often dominate over men in terms of numbers. Um, yet there is still a disparity in terms of leadership um, in, um, like, say, Fortune 500 companies, uh, major corporations where where there is a, um, a lead art director, but it's predominantly men. So as we look to continue on with this documentary film, there's a lot that we still have to do. Uh, Mandy and I have been researching so far for about a year, uh, just about a year now. Uh, and it's amazing how much material, material we've gathered, but it's also amazing how much material we still need to gather. So some of our next steps is... We'll, one, we're looking for co-researchers and we're uh, currently uh, compiling some names uh, so we can reach out to them. But we're looking for co-researchers in gender studies, women's studies, and sociology, uh, and, and how those things relate to, um, to this story. Uh, the next thing that we have to do is, is think about the filming schedule. When can we actually get back out there and do some filming? Um, a couple of things that we're looking at, there is the possibility of doing social distancing with on location filming. And as great as that is, one of the locations that has the majority of our um, interviewees is New York City in New York State. The situation there is New York State currently has a quarantine where if you travel into the state, you have to quarantine for two weeks straight before you can have contact with anyone else in the world. Um, so it makes it really impossible to schedule time to go out to New York City if we're just going to be in a room quarantined for 14 days. There's no way to do interviews. Um, so we have to look at the filming schedule and where the different interviewees are. We have East Coast and West Coast, New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, uh, Colorado, Oklahoma, um, West Virginia, uh, and other locations, um, Seattle, Seattle, Washington, and some different places uh, across the, the West Coast. So we have to really kind of put together that plan on what's next. Another thing that we have to do is get the story out. 
We have to get the story out that the story's coming. Um, rather than just expecting this film to be completed and just gather an audience, it's going to be really critical that we start telling the story of redesigning her story uh, as soon as possible. We have a URL and a website that we're just starting to build uh, at the time of this conference. It's, it's, uh, it's live, but there's nothing built there yet. We do have social media accounts as well. And uh, those social media accounts, I'll put at the end of the um, video part of the conference here that we're presenting. Uh, and we're building those slowly. I'm fortunate enough to have uh, an um, a internship student that was able to intern with me to work on the film. So that's going to be really exciting. Plus, I have the opportunity to bring in a performance scholar, another student, to assist with some of those endeavors. So we're looking forward to getting some of these things rolling. So we encourage all of you to um, follow and subscribe to our different social media channels and spread the word, support. Um, and as we, as we post different things on our social media, it would be fantastic for you to keep in touch with us as well and give us comments on what you would like to see in this, in this documentary film as well. Um, we think the voice of the viewer is the most important voice that we can have. So we want to bring you the information that you want to hear about, about this story, which again goes back to my original concept of just bringing a collective together of great women graphic designers um, isn't enough. We really have to tell their story. So some of the topics that we plan to include um, are going to be uh, like main themes of archiving and documenting, uh, documenting how are, how are women um, archived and documented in history? How does that compare to the number of men that are archived and documented in history? Um, how does this, uh, you know, these things like, um, the idea of institutional credibility affect women um, and notoriety as well. Awards, museum placement in museums and galleries. Um, what does it take for women to get there? Um, and then also ideas about moving away from traditional or patriarchal approaches to archiving and documenting. Um, you know, how does this affect uh, women and their place in, in archives and in museums. Um, we are, of course, going to look at some of the historical figures. We'll, we'll hopefully talk to people about um, C.B. Pinellas, Elaine Lustig-Cohen, um, and then talk to active graphic designers today who are widely regarded, such as April Griman, um, Gail Anderson, Jennifer Morla, um, we also plan to look at people who might have been overlooked and forgotten throughout history, um, including even talking about this idea of an anonymous designer, um, designers who toil away in a firm as part of a collective who don't get recognized and what that means. We're going to talk about a woman's life in design, um, examining her journey into a career of design, things like education and opportunities that may have been available to men and not to women. Um, and of course, gender disparity there. We're going to look at marriage and family life and how that affects women and their careers, um, the demands of motherhood or choosing not to be a mother, um, giving up a career perhaps to become a mother. Um, and then of course, uh, supportive roles, women who, who st stepped back and were supportive of men in their careers or, or women who had a mutual support system. Um, and then of course, we'll talk a little bit more about disparity, um, more generally gender stereotypes. Um, you know, why were there no women linotype operators or, or very few? Um, and then did, Things like new technology, like photo typesetting, help break the gender barrier for, for women. Um, looking at women in paste-up and mechanical art or production artists. Um, and then women in leadership roles today. Um, let's see. Tokenism. What does it mean to be the token female? And then, of course, experiences for BIPOC women. Um, to not just be a token female, but to maybe be the token black female or um, Hispanic, um, what have you. And then finally, let's, we'll probably look at what equality actually looks like and, and talk about how can we achieve that? Is it achievable? 
um, and, and some ideas around that. Watch for um, the film to come out. Again, uh, lots of work that we have to do. We still have a lot of filming to do. And uh, we hope to have a couple um, small teasers that we can get out prior to the full release of the full length film. So um, yeah, follow us on the social media accounts, um, email us if you have any questions or interest, and we would love to speak with you at any opportunity. Thank you for joining us for our presentation. We hope that you enjoyed our conversation on redesigning her story, and we hope that you're looking forward to the release of the film in spring of 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you.